Right, let's dig for some clay. Where do we find clay? Well, clay in the winter quite often has water sitting on top of it because it gets full of water and it can't take any more water, so the water sits on top. And in the summer, it dries up really, really dry and quite often gets a bit smaller and it cracks, there's great big cracks and it. it's really, really tough stuff in the summer. So I know, because this is in my little bit of garden, I know that this bit down here is clay because at the moment it's quite squishy. A few weeks ago when it's rained, do you remember when it rained loads and loads? It was covered in water. And I know that in the summer, when it gets really, really hot, this will start cracking up and it get really, really solid. So we need clay to work with. First thing we need to do is get rid of all the stuff. Bits and bobs there, we don't want bits and bobs. And then we need a spade. Back in medieval times, do you think they'd have a, a metal spade like that? No, probably. Maybe even a wooden one. Can you imagine that made of wood, digging with wood? That'd be quite an interesting thing to do. And so, you can see it's a bit, a bit solid. It's kind of mud, but a bit more sticky than mud. And we'll take that up. It's got all sorts of bits and bobs in it. And then, we need a bucket. Here we go, great big bucket time. Chuck in the bucket, a bit more, and then we'll see what we do next. A bit more. I promise you this is not a gardening program. A bit more in the bucket, and there we go. We have got some clay in our bucket. Now, our clay is pretty good, but can you see it's got some roots and things in it? So the next thing that everybody has to do with clay is pull, pull out the bits you don't want. They call it the impurities. So you'd have people working on this, you know, it's got leaves in it, that's no good. Leaves have to come out, and the little sticks and things, there's a stick in there, that's no good. You just pull out all the impurities until all, all you've got is clay. No, look, it's a bit of plastic, oh, pollution. You've got all sorts of bits and pieces that you don't want in there, you've got to pull out all the bits you don't want until you've got a nice clean clay to work with. And of course, oh look, there's a worm. And of course, this is, anybody like worms? Oh look, it's a bird's dinner. So we'll just keep going until all we've got is clay with as few bits and bobs, no stones, no worms, no roots. So we're ready to turn it into clay that we can start working with. Cleaning the clay up took a little bit longer than I thought it would do. Getting all of the, the worms and the little stones and the bits of grass and the little bits of roots, it took actually quite a long time. Because you need, can you imagine picking up a cup to drink a nice cup of tea or something out of it? and you find a little bit of a stone sticking out the side of it, something like that, or there's your best plate on the table and it's got a little piece of grass sticking out of it still. So you have to get rid of all those bits and bobs. So maybe I, sh I should dig in a different place for my clay next time. Maybe there's a better place for cleaner clay. So there's my clay. It's all crumbly, as you can see. And it's fairly clean, although I'm still pulling out roots and things. I think I could probably continue doing that for the rest of the day. So I need to make it all stick together now, make it a little bit more sticky. Are you ready? Can you see that? Here comes the bucket. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water, just like cooking, you don't want to chuck it all in at once. You add a little bit of ingredient and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. So we'll add just a little bit of water. What's the best thing for mixing it with? What do you think? Yep, you guessed it. Right. That's where you get to see me getting all mucky again. Right. So I haven't put too much water in, I'm mixing it together. And there you go. Just keep mixing it up. Keep mixing it up and can you see? Now it's beginning to turn into, squish it and mix it, try and get the lumps out, just like cooking really. And it's beginning to turn into clay. Now actually, look, can you see what I've done wrong? I think I put a little bit too much water in that. So, you have to wait for that to dry a little bit more and then you can work with it properly. We are back inside my kitchen, so it's Soldier Museum at home, in your home as well. And that's because we're going to be working on the kitchen table. Do you remember we've just been looking at the medieval floor tiles? There were one, two, three, four, and then there was one, two, three, four. So you've got four and four. How many is that all together? Four times four? Work that one out. So for this, you're going to need a piece of paper. I'm using A3, but you could use A4, it doesn't matter really. And a ruler or a tape measure maybe there's a um, for making clothes with or a DIY tape measure doesn't matter as long as you can measure a pencil so we're going to do three by three rather than four by four so we need to turn this into one two three columns there and then one two three there so we'll have a little bit spare at the bottom so what we need to do is measure and put the ruler along there and we measure 
and that says 29 and a half. So I need to know how many times one, two, three will go into 29 and a half. I could try and be very clever and do it in my head, or I could cheat and use a calculator. You might have one of these at home. <clears throat> if not, excuse me for coughing. You might have a mobile phone, aha, uh -huh. and they've all got calculators on them. So, what was it? Our number across is 29 across, 29 and a bit, let's call it 29. And then we go divided by three, and the answer is 9.66666. I'll see that. Whoop. It's 9.6666. So we say nine and a half, okay? So, put that over there. What we need to do here is along the top, we start at nothing, and we go across to nine, and we go find the half. Halfway mark there, and we mark that one off. And then what you could do is be very clever and count on another nine and a half, or if that's a bit confusing, start again. And you're doing nine and a half, and then you've got see my marks there one, two, three. And then we use that number again, so we use nine and a half down the other side here. So we start at nothing in the corner, and we go nine and a half, and then we're going to make it easy. So we start again at the little mark we've made, and then nine and a half. One, two, so we need one more. And nine and a half. And then we need to do it on this side as well. So they're all, they're all matching up. Oh, just not my tripod, sorry about that. Oops, right, so nice and straight line. Nine and a half mark there. We start with that line there. And we go nine and a half mark there. And then we're moving down the page. And then it's nine and a half mark there. Now. What we can do now is with our ruler, <coughs> or anything straight, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit hay fever this morning, a little bit of coffee, we put on there, on there. Can you see, I'm on that mark, and I'm on that mark there. Across, and that mark, and that mark there. Where are we? There he is. It's hidden. So we're doing something from history, but, yes, you guessed it, we're also doing maths today. And we need some marks down here. So, starting from the right at the bottom, nine and a bit there, and then start from our new mark, nine and a bit there, and then is the ruler long enough? Not really, so we need something a bit longer to draw a line along there, or uh, about this one on our on our line we just drawn across nine and a half there. Uh, Anybody at home who works as a builder, they'll be doing this kind of thing all the time at work. Builder or carpet person or maybe someone who does lots of cutting out. There's a line there. And there's a line there. And there we have it. There is our grid ready for putting our art onto. Now we're ready to start doing a design on it. Maybe, because we went for a square here, we've made a square from a rectangle. Maybe we could chop this bit off. A pair of scissors, cut that along there if you want to. But we've got our square now. So the first thing I'm going to do is just like the pattern we saw on the medieval tiles, I'm going to do a circle. So I'm going to start at the marks there and go around. I hope this works. Around. It'd be funny if it didn't, wouldn't it? You're all watching it when I make a mistake. That would be very funny. So I'm going to. So I've gone from that mark there to that mark there. Oh, don't go outside, Owen. That's silly. And around again. And around again. Okay, phew. Can you just about see the outside line now? So what I'm going to do is one just slightly inside from there. So about that much inside from there. Oh, there you go, that much. So we go around. Follow the line you've just done. And then I think I'd like something, one big thing in the middle. So what I'll do is, I'm going to do a smiley sun. So right in the middle, you could do a sun if you want, anything you like. I'm just thinking, looking out the window today, let's do a sun. So big, brown sun. And this is how I do a face. I do an eyebrow, down to a nose, and then another eyebrow, and then a big smiley mouth. And they've got a little bit on the edge of the mouth there. And then we need some eyes, so you do line, 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 line. There you go, that's my smiley face. And then we need some sun rays off the sun. So we go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle like that. Wiggle, wiggle. 
keeping it all inside the, the square in the middle. How about that? It's looking like a, a sun. I chose a sun, we'll talk about why we chose images in a minute. I chose a sun because it's, it's a strong symbol of happiness, I think, and we need lots of happiness in the world at the moment. So around here, we need another repeated image. Let's have, they were leaves, weren't they? Leaves and nuts or berries or something like that. So here's my, here's my rough idea piece of paper. It's a, you draw, how do you draw a leaf well? It's a bit like a heart, so you go out there, and then in there, and then round there, around there. And then you put a stem on it, that's where the leaf grows from. And then so really, because so it looks like a, a weird sort of heart at the moment. Then you put a little line there, and then some little lines there. Ah, it suddenly becomes a leaf. So we'll do those around the outside. That, and the stem, and the little lines. And that joins onto another one. Let's do another one there. Another one there. Let's do another one there. You're getting the idea now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to see if I can make this little film do fast forward. If it can't, it, there you go. What we're going to see if we can do a fast forward, whizzing forward on the film. In the floor tiles we looked at from the museum, in the middle of the floor tiles there were the shields with the um, little symbols on. So I thought we'd look a little bit more about the symbols. I found this book, books are brilliant. And right on the first page, very, very first page, are some symbols. Now this is, I've read, the coat of arms for Salisbury. So you see the two eagles, and it's got the shield in the middle, and they all mean something. And how do I know this? Because I read it in a book. So the stripes in the middle are supposed to be the rivers because there are um, at least five rivers that run through Salisbury, the five main rivers. There's the Avon, the Bourne, the Ebble, the Nadder, and the Wiley. So those are supposed to be rivers. Now then, it says rivers, but you're probably looking at it thinking one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I've just listed off five rivers. So I'm not sure about that either, but the book, uh, the book that I read, it says rivers. And then we have these birds. What kind of birds are they? Well, they've got two heads, which is a little bit strange, but they're supposed to be eagles. And then if this was in color, I have read, they would have blue legs and blue beaks, which means there's a royal connection. And can you see around their necks, which is a bit of a strange place to have it, there are crowns. And these are supposed to be the Duke's crowns, not the King's crowns, but the Duke's crowns to show that they are royal. So that's the royal connection or kind of regal connection with Salisbury. So that's the Salisbury coat of arms. So you can maybe think about that if you're going to create your own coat of arms, what would you have on yours? Add in this book, Made some little marks. I guess. How about that? Right in the middle of that, that's on a building just near the cathedral. There's another coat of arms, and that's got lots and lots of things going on with it. It's got a harp, and there are some lions. Three lions, does that do you recognise that? Maybe it's from football. What do three lions mean? And then we keep look, keep looking. And my next mark is there's that. We just looked at that. Oh, a bit too close. Just looked at that, that's on that building there. And then as you walk into the cathedral close, if you look up, do you recognize that archway? This, this shop here now is a hairdresser's, but opposite that shop is a fudge shop at the moment. If you look up, there's another coat of arms with lots and lots of things going on. There's, there's the harp and there's three lions in there and there's all sorts of symbols going on there. So something for you to do, go on the internet, look up, what do these symbols mean? Why do they keep having things like lions and horses and unicorns and harps? What's that all about? So there you are. But that is the heraldry for Salisbury. And to finish, cut that bit there, that's spare now. No. Let's have these sun rays coming out, they go they spread right across the land, so let's have some bigger rays. Oh. Go across like that. So they're going from that tile onto that tile now. So you could have something, I think of something that would spread across from that tile to that tile. What could that be? Why would that be? Hmm. 
my sun rays sticking out to do some more if we want. And then we've got still got four corners. So each corner, let's have, let's make this seriously happy. Let's do some more happy faces. Practice this happy face. So we do the eyebrow down to the nose, and the other eyebrow, and the eye, and the eye, and the happy face. And then let's do another one. Two. And three. Fill the space right up. Eyebrow and nose, eye, mouth. And the last one, fill that space right up there. And so the eyebrow down to the nose, the eye, and the eye, and the eye, and the mouth. So we've still got some spaces here. You can think about what to put in there. But that's just to give you a rough idea of what we're doing. And then of course you could colour it in if you want to. I've done it on green paper, but you could colour yours in. And then the very last part, the fun part. Scissors again. Let's let's chop it up. You might think, oh no, don't destroy the artwork, but actually, it's quite good fun once you have chopped it up. Because Right, and then these ones. So I've done all this quite quickly. Do yours with much more care and attention, a little bit slower. Think about what colours. We had orange tiles, didn't we, with sort of whitey, yellowy detail. But you could do all sorts of colours in yours. But what I would recommend is that you repeat the colours. So if the leaves are blue, decide to do blue leaves and do all of the leaves blue and all, all the little smiley faces yellow something like that so there we go we've got all the pieces and put them together and there is your medieval floor and then if you want to what does it look like if you start messing it about a little bit oh, it's completely different a little bit strange isn't it weird? But there you go there is your medieval floor which you can mess around with now change around finished <laughs>